Hi, this is Lesher Doyle. This week I want to address something that's fundamental to being an athlete. Endurance. Well, as Sifu would tell me, how bad do you want it? I was 24 coming up on my black belt test. This was the first thing I'd ever accomplished in my life on my own. It was the first thing I'd ever undertaken without my parents' influence, like had been my experiences with Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts. This was mine. This was my project, my goal, my desire, and I wanted it bad. So bad I would devote an hour every day to going through my forms and working on my cardio to prepare for the three hour long test. I had a burning desire like I'd never had before. I was determined not to quit but to see the test through to the end. Endurance for a black belt is much more than just finishing a race, a test, or a trial. It's about what convictions you have deep inside you. It's about commitment. How committed are you to your goal? Do you want it like the air that you breathe? Do you want it like you need it? If so, don't let anything stop you. But endurance isn't just for athletes. Take, for example, the young, a young girl victim of a horrible crime and how she has had the endurance not to just survive, but to thrive. I'm getting this from a particular blog site I read earlier today. This is a true story of a young woman who went through the most gruesome fire. When you read her story, you'll realize your trials are absolutely nothing compared to what this young girl went through. It was September 25th, 2000. Marcel Apitan was an 11-year-old girl in Zambanoga. On that day, this little girl went with her uncle to draw water. Along the way, four men met them. They were carrying long knives. They told her uncle to lie face down on the ground, and they hacked him on the neck and killed him. Marcel was in shock, especially that the men were their neighbors. She tried to escape, but the men ran after her. She cried, Don't kill me, have mercy on me, but they weren't listening. With a long knife, a man slashed her on the neck, too. Marcel fell to the ground and lost consciousness. When she woke up, she saw a lot of blood. She also saw the feet of the men around her, but she pretended to be dead. When they walked away, Marcel ran back home, but along the way, she saw that both her hands were falling off because the men hacked them too. She cried, but she kept running. Sometimes she would faint and fall to the ground, but she'd regain consciousness and run again. When she was near her home, Marcel called her mother. Upon seeing her daughter, her mother screamed in terror. She wrapped her bloody child in a blanket and carried her to the hospital. Here was the problem. From her house to the highway, it was a 12-kilometer walk. It took them four hours just to reach the highway. When they arrived in the hospital, the doctors thought Marcel was going to die, but for five hours they operated on her. It took 25 stitches to stitch together the long knife wound in her neck and back. Marcel barely survived, and she lost both her hands. Ironically, the next day was Marcel's birthday. She was 12 years old. But tragedy didn't end there. When they went home, they saw that their home was gone. It was ransacked and burned down by the goons. Being very poor, Marcel's family didn't have the money for their hospital bills. Archbishop Antonio Ledesma, a distant relative, paid for the hospital bills and helped bring the criminals to court. They were sentenced to prison. Marcel struggled to cope with her disability. I was totally dependent on my mother, she recalls. She returned to school, but teasing by classmates often left her in tears. In 2004, Archbishop Led Ledesma arranged for Marcel to live in the House with No Steps, a Manila rehabilitation and training center for people with disabilities. She learned how to write and do chores, and more importantly, to come to terms with her disability. Trusting in God, I became more determined to strive to have a normal life. I believed I have an important mission in life because I survived the attack. Marcel eventually graduated from high school and enrolled in a two-year hotel and restaurant management course in Cagayan de Oro City. I really have enjoyed cooking since I was seven years old. Thanks in large part to her parents' unwavering support, Marcel flourished even though she was the only disabled student in the course. I wasn't shy or intimidated to sign up for class competitions like cake decorating. After Marcel moved back to Manila to continue her studies, the media started reporting on this indomitable young woman. She didn't shy away from the attention. I wanted others living with disabilities to believe it's possible to live a normal life, Marcel says. When managers at the Adesa Shangri-La Hotel saw Marcel on television, they hired her as part of the hotel's Care for People project. Fellow chef 
Ajamil Borgia marvels at Marcel's skills. She asks for assistance only if she needs to move a hot kettle or large saucepan from the stove or open a slippery bottle cap, says Ajamil. Marcel has also accomplished her goal of inspiring others. One of them is Ronalyn Calumpiano, a 21-year-old with several palsy. Confined to a wheelchair, she rarely left her Manila home and has never attended school. Then she saw Marcel on television. I watched her demonstrate how to prepare vegetables for a salad with so much confidence, she recalls. Rona Lynn, who now lives at the house with no steps, will soon start classes and is already planning a career in IT. Marcel's three younger siblings have moved to Manila. She pays for the rent of their small apartment while their parents looked after the family farm in Mindano. It is difficult to make ends meet, but I don't lose hope. I believe anything is possible if you dream, work hard, and pray. But this is the incredible miracle. Instead of staying down, Marcel kept running. Instead of cursing God while she had no hands, she now uses her wrists in incredible ways that will boggle your mind. Marcel was cited as the most industrious, best in computer, and most courteous in the school for crippled children. In 2008, she graduated from a course in hotel and restaurant management. She even received a gold medal for arts and crafts. In 2011, she finished her education to be a chef. Yes, a chef without hands. Nothing can stop this young lady from reaching her dreams. So my question is, do you have your dreams, do you have your commitment the way that she does? She lacks hands, but she doesn't lack the endurance to deal with life as it has happened to her. She's endured much, but now she's reaching her dreams. Find me on Facebook at Doyle's Elite Martial Arts and on my new website by the same name, Doyle's Elite Martial Arts dot com. Follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram at the number 5 Ancestor Fist. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave a comment below. Don't stop training.